The onset of putrefaction hasn't destroyed the charm. Yeah. On the hour, maximum use of the BBC's news resources. And now it's time for a video review, and our reviewer this week is Bob Tiff. Uh, Bob, have you found it an interesting selection this week? Thank you, Chris. And three new films to tell you about this week, all of them specially rewritten and reshot for the video market. A case in point is Merchant Ivory's Room with a View 2, set like its predecessor in a Tuscan summer of long ago. Touching and sturdy performances by a stalwart team of British actors, including Denham Elliott, Judy Dench and Maggie Smith, are somewhat marred by the presence in the video version of a lethal swamp monster who stalks the streets of Florence by night, devouring Anglican clergymen. Overall, a disappointment. But there is a convincing performance as Chagrin the cleric-slaying mud creature from Simon Callow. Missouri is the setting for Woody Allen's new offering, Vacation of the Heart, another dowdy production from the former comedian. Four middle-aged New York sitcom producers meet up at a remote mountain ranch. Dave and Marty are both in love with Danny's wife, Sue, while the fourth man, Melvin, has suddenly fallen in love with himself and has decided to make a film about it. Gradually, as the weekend progresses, Melvin and Dave discover more about themselves than Danny and Marty did of each other. Here's a clip. Dave, I don't think I can write it. Oh, for Christ's sake, what do you mean you can't write it? I mean this joke. I can't... I can feel it, but I can't write it. Yeah, but comedy is about feeling. Yeah, yeah, but where's the joke? Maybe I'm the joke. Or the joke. Look out! He's hacked my arm up. Woody Allen and Michael Murphy there, with a brief appearance as the mutilated, axe-wielding corpse of a long-dead Nazi by Mia Farrow. Of course, vacation of the heart. And finally, we go to the bottom of the pile, in every sense. From TriStar Videos comes Revenge of the Stinking Dead. The title, sleeve notes, and indeed still photographs on the cover promise much entertaining spilling of gore and severing of limbs. But sadly, all this is lacking in the film itself. Director Bill Goering misses several opportunities to spatter the old red stuff, and instead shamelessly concentrates on the slight tale of a young Russian peasant boy struggling to nurture his gift for the viola, while managing the demands of his dead father's farm. What should have been an enjoyable 90 minutes of nubile high school flesh meeting a frenzy of blood-caked blades becomes instead an exploitational and complex parable of the conflicting demands of agrarianism and artistry. I voted a miss. On the hour. Choice morsels from a broad kitchen. More news now from the World Summit on the Future. Can I just make one final point to you, Nick, and that's this. No. And the summit has, of course, been a rich source of material for comic satirists. Our reporter, Steve Largesse, paid a visit to the offices of Radio 4's long-running, irreverent romp through the week's news. Thank God it's satire day. It's 11 o'clock on Wednesday morning, and I'm holding in my hand a blank piece of paper. But by Saturday evening, not only must this page be full of thought-provoking topical jokes... But those jokes must be broadcast on the radio to be heard by us. So, just how is this unbelievable and amazing transformation brought about? Well, I'm here at the Satire Day Writers' Meeting to find out. Well, here goes. Hello! Hello, 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 hello! Hello, hello, hello! Nice to so see you. So, here we are. Steve, Steve, sit down. Uh, meet the others. Deborah Lindsay is the producer. Right. This... Summit <coughs> conference, mm -hmm. guys. Um, mm. Any ideas, Martin? Mm. Yeah, uh, Deb. Well, I, I was thinking it through last night. Mm. It just seemed to me like quite a clever angle if we sort of took it back to Robin Hood and like we portrayed Gorbachev as Robin Hood and connect that with you know, like John Major could be the sheriff of Nottingham. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes, yes. I'll hold on to that, Martin. Um, Richard. Yeah, I uh, I had an idea actually. What about if uh, if we did a parallel with the uh, like the Robin Hood story, only taking Robin Hood to be John Major and uh, and Gorbachev to be Sheriff of Nottingham? I think that might be a nice little you know, <laughs> <laughs> make yeah, a few yeah. points yeah. that way. Yeah. Yes, I like it. I like it. And then Mrs. Thatcher could be like Maid Marian, maybe. That's fantastic. I'm gonna go yeah. with it. No, because no. Fry Tuck could be Willie White though, I think maybe. No, no, that that wouldn't yeah, work. Uh, Norman Willis. Maybe. Yeah, but it is. I'll go away and work on it, and then maybe I'll show it to you. 
I know, and I then think the two of you should then, get your heads together, yeah. go down to the coffee bar, talk through, bash it yeah. through, but come I'll back up. But I'll take it away. I'm on a five-minute commission. If I, if I share it with him, then I've only got two and a half minutes. I think we can thrash this through when actually the sketch is written, guys. Shall we... Uh, yeah, so shall we I'll write through? it, then we'll thrash it through, yeah? Yeah, but I'll, I'll do the actual writing and Richard can, like, advise, maybe. Commissioned writer Martin Longthorpe has been writing for Satire Day for 23 years. The thing I always like to throw into the pot is, is the Robin Hood idea. Because I think, you know, Robin Hood, it, it's endless. Robin Hood will always be there. And so I chuck it in every week. Well, here we are, 24 hours later. The script has been written, and Richard's Robin Hood sketch is chosen to be performed for the show. <laughs> ha ha! I am Robin John Major Hood. Yes, you are so short sighted. You probably wear some kind of hood. <laughs> I rob from the poor and give to the rich because I am completely evil and government is really bad if it's right wing. Yes, with you in charge, I doubt we'll wing the next election. Mmm, makes you think, Iron Maid Marion. Oh, and apparently there's been some kind of summit this week as well. Ooh, I mm -hmm. that. I'd say my ultimate ambition for Satire Day is to bring down the Tories and their shame-faced hypocrisy. But also, and more importantly, I'd like to give old and middle-class people in the South East something to chuckle about on a Saturday night. Thank God It's Satire Day was written by Larkajin Babs, Gingerly Roundabouts, Polly Pantomime, Stephen Hull Hosiery, Peru, Dick Hickory, Simeon Samian, Beanbill Bambendi, Lennon Barry, Harry Bean, Therese and Tommy Territory, with news lines by Melton Stitt, Massingbird Massingbird, Gary Riot, Keith Bruhaha, Christ, Lardy Dar Harcastle, Engelbert Impromptu, and Fact Portugal. It's ten to three to four to five, and the conclusions of the summit have just been announced. And the first surprise was the announcement itself, which was made in a new world language called Interglotti. The decisions were as follows. Human tree. Good evening. Clem tree behind. Shabaka shabaka shalil. The lob shahonda cock portion cock portion. Future would be better if. Everything was moved over to the left a bit. Builders didn't have asses. Hobbly trot, hobbly trot. There were a few more red things. Suck for hacker. And people breathed out less often than they breathed in. Now. And at home, public reaction to the new rulings has been swift. What do you think of the proposals for breathing out a little less often? I would think you're, you're barking up a, a sticky wicket there. And say for every 20 times you breathe in, how uh, many times should you breathe out? About 10. What do you think of the very latest proposals to make a few more red things? Um, well, I don't think very much, really. I don't like too highly coloured things. So what do you think of the let's make a few more red things society? I expect it attracts the younger people, but it doesn't appeal to me so much. Well, there's enough red things about in there. Are there? There's enough red things about, like fire engines, post boxes. What could be the danger in having too many red things? Well, if you have too many red things, your eyes start going. How many more red things should we be allowed? Oh, about three or four. A successful end to the World Summit on the future. Can I just make one final point? No. Think? Closing music. And it's time for a look at tomorrow's headlines. The Times, farmer loses piece of straw in unexpected gust disaster. They're devoting 12 pages to that story. The Telegraph, Penelope Keith riots end in shaving contest. The Independent, Tory backbench in sword fight with devil. There's a diagram there of hell. And The Sun, princess dies hair dishevelled by seven-inch tornado. That's it, and wherever you're going, hello. Hello.